Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Michelle. I'm part of the team at Tamron Tree, an organization that has been working to redefine elementary education in India. Uh, I'm I'm quite surprised actually that there are 70 people. Uh, many of you are known to us. We've been working together, but we have about a decade of experience in testing and experimenting with open educational technologies, particularly with marginalized children. At the ground level, we run uh, an operation in Northwest Maharashtra in Dahanu, where we run a school for tribal children from class one to class 10. And we've built a model of educational intervention entirely on the open source framework, right from the hardware to the content and the software. We are committed fully and wholly to only using open educational resources. And uh, we've put this model in place. We have a Moodle instance called mybigcampus.in, which we experimented uh, with our tribal children from class one to class 10. 10, and we've now opened mybigcampus.in in Pan India. Uh, we opened it last year, but it's you know it's got a it's got a momentum in the lockdown where we are offering open and free elementary courses. That is courses for primary children from six years to fourteen years, and we've even extended to eighteen years. Um, uh, we have. Uh, been advocating and pushing in all forums, particularly in the modal modes, but in, in all public forums, that the only way to build any kind of equity in India and education is to go open. The only way that we can actually provide good quality education to every learner, particularly given the inequity in our, in our country, is to use an open framework. Right from the first modal mode uh, in 2016, which was held in Delhi, uh, Tamarind Tree and my team uh, have played a role to bring the idea of technology in education with a philosophical perspective, with a political understanding. And I think taking off from where uh, Martin said that, you know, Moodle and a lot of the other open source responses are the resistance. We are the resistance rebels where we are telling the society and we're telling the world that technology in education or technology in any sphere, whether it's media or it's music or it's filmmaking or it's my personal life, needs to be driven and controlled by the community. So my presentation today is not the nitty gritties of Moodle, which uh, there are many people who are going to share, but it's really putting a philosophical framework into us as educators, us as computer programmers, us as people who run ed tech companies and um, us as learners and saying that why and how can Moodle build and help build and help build an open education movement in India. Uh, I will try to answer some of the questions in the public chat, and but I have only 15 minutes, so I'll move ahead. Um, a lot of these things we are aware of. We've been talking about a lot of us are products of a, a really a problematic education system. We have the right to free and compulsory education in India, yet the goal of primary education has not been achieved. Uh, the data is very, very skewed. Some people say there are 30 million children out of school. Some people say there are 13 million children out of school. Uh, you will all agree with me that the qu quality of education today, whether it's in a public school or in a private school, but particularly we are talking about the public public schooling system, the context, the relevance and the, you know, I mean, it's completely redundant. You go to school from class one to class 10. You are you are in an atmosphere of rote learning. You are in an atmosphere of hierarchy. The content that you are um, actually engaging with is completely sort of redundant. So some of the problems of the education system need to be addressed and acknowledged. And what we find is that people keep saying, yes, we know this. And you know, yes, we know this. And then parallelly, they get excited about technology. But they don't really, there's no clear understanding that the dissonance of the pedagogy and content with what is happening in modern times is very, very high. So if we are going to apply ed tech to replicate the same dissonance, we're going to do the same rote learning through a platform like Moodle. We're going to con you know, continuously do extensive grading, extensive competitive examinations. We are replicating the education system just on a digital platform. So what, what we what we spend time saying is that please try to acknowledge and understand what are the problems. Uh, Along with the dissonance in the in the content and the pedagogy, there's also been since the 90s when India has opened up its market, there's been an increasing commodification of education. So once we've opened up our markets, uh, we also looked at education as a product. We looked at it as a as a product to be transacted, and the student became a consumer. Now, in our opinion, this has created the biggest sort of you know problems in the education system because children like this in the picture you see from a village close by uh, are simply denied access 
and if they have access they have no uh, you know they have no quality education so increasingly with the opening up of the market the commodification of education and then the ownership so now the ownership is not just of the content it's not just a byju's who will tell me how electricity is produced but it's also ownerships of digital infrastructure and platforms and the technology that has become increasingly proprietary uh these are issues that we must understand when we look at moodle in the larger picture because moodle is offering some solutions uh i'll just go ahead these are typical classrooms uh i think a lot of you uh, are aware of how you know indian education system particularly uh in uh, i mean even even the private education systems are still hoarding they're still looking at classrooms as a delivery space they are still uh, you know there is a student teacher hierarchy this is a typical uh, village school nearby where we where we operate and uh, and essentially is becoming increasingly uh, uh, you know in increasingly uh, true that there is no point in sending somebody to school whether you are from a privileged or an underprivileged background so what we are saying is that us as a community of people in the open source or us as a community of practitioners us as educators need to first situate education as a right and not a privilege we need to see that the kind of structural inequity in a country like india it the, the society is so fragmented if we really want education to be you know as a basic human right then we need to look at education as a right and then figure out how moodle fits into this now what does the open education movement say and sometimes i think that uh, a few people forget uh, the critical parts of the open education movement which is that it fundamentally is looking at how it can change the social relationships in the society can these children sitting in the image can participate in the global world not just by consuming high quality content but by creating it by owning the means and the tools of production of how to create this content by owning the digital infrastructure Op the open education movement definitely builds equity but it it puts it puts into place very critical questions of ownership very quick, quick critical question of who owns the infrastructure who owns the digital resources who accesses it and who then uses it it's collaborative i mean i mean all of you know this but i think sometimes in our work this you know this gets uh, this gets forgotten and for us it can fundamentally alter the way we do education and this is this is for us and in the last 10 years has been the critical point that we didn't use technology just for technology's sake we didn't think that this is um, you know like it's technology and it's wow but we we wanted to change education and technology became the tool and the means by which we could change the way education is done this again is possible because of open tools and platforms like moodle uh just before i get into that so when we're talking about how an ed how a open education tool or how an open education technology can actually change the way you do education so for us at tamarind tree and uh, the next session is being conducted by chirag and he is going to share a lot of how we broke the education model we were able to put in place uh, we started with blended learning but we were able to put in place a independent self learning mode of education with no classroom delivery content and uh, you know direction of pedagogy being directed from the screen children deciding their own pace and teachers really becoming mentors teachers really saying that look the onus of learning is on you there is everything available today we can only mentor and facilitate your learning so our vision of saying that people need to become self motivated learners the world today is about how i learn not how i can teach and what i can teach but how i can really learn and we were able to fulfill these you know i mean fulfill these ideas and values because of a platform like moodle along with a host of other open source uh, you know open educational resources and i think uh, this is critical that the uh, that platforms like moodle allow you to dismantle the existing structures which are really very problematic now what we are saying is that moodle can really uh, a platform like moodle can really spread across india and some of the things some of the recent developments have been that post 2016 17 particularly a lot of pri private players have come into india and there is a huge data penetration there is you know i mean the mobile revolution as you all know is you know uh, absolutely across the country so th there are solutions that open education tools and open educational resources like moodle can offer pan india to both elementary secondary and all kinds of other educational institutions so we are looking at 
you know things like zilla parishad school could have a local hosted server even on a raspberry pi so that you know uh, in in a particular classroom 50 children log into a local server if there are internet issues along with a package of oers right from um, you know your content authoring tools like h5p or the big blue button or gcompre and we use a lot of other tools you could really create a, a holistic experience for the child at very very affordable cost the other reason why the open education movement and moodle makes sense for a country like india in case anyone has a doubt is the sheer affordability of it uh, so these are uh, uh, these are points that uh, you know that we need to consider however what we've been struggling with for the last 10 years and this is why we come uh, as advocates is there is no mindset to really be open whether it's from the government or it's even from edtech players uh, private players programmers individuals need to see that there is potential and open is the only way to go they need to believe in it philosophically and politically and then they also need to understand that there is revenue possible uh, moodle is an example in itself there are so many other wonderful global uh, you know uh, uh, open education projects and open projects in other spaces that have proved that they are sustainable and revenue generating for some reason uh, over the last 10 years maybe because we are a, you know developing country we have issues of uh, you know our resources resources are tight but i think we lack imagination as a country to say that really yes we can go open and really we must adopt open education tools there are many people in this forum uh, who i have had discussions with over the last 5 years and uh, there has been a resistance to you know release their products in the open domain they are scared that um, you know the open domain will not generate the revenue so i think we all together here um, need to play a role in saying that the future is open and we need to push for the use of open resources uh, like moodle so Uh, i mean that's uh, that's really one of the reasons we one of the you know the broader outlook that moodle must be pushed as one of the open solutions in a country like india for elementary and secondary education and uh, what we've done in the last 8 to 10 years is that we've said that look this is possible with tribal children in a rural village in in you know in maharashtra uh, where children from a young age are only using open educational tools as i said whether it's hardware or it's software or it's any kind of content and if this is possible in an area like this then we definitely believe that moodle can be moodle and and the you know the whole set of open education resources can really be applicable across the country and be used to push that education as a human right uh, so uh, as i said earlier for us the experiences have been uh, uh, phenomenal we uh, struggled a lot with the use of moodle Uh, we started off in 2011 12 and i think it was only in 2017 18 that we got a confidence that this is how education must be done and this is what the platform is for so we are at mybigcampus.in we um, this is how a typical uh, this is what a mentor does in our school she mentors a student one on one we broke the classroom structure completely with moodle we uh, the teachers come into the school and come into the learning space saying that i am a learner today what can i learn what can i build what new can i do and what can i release in the open source domain and critically our byline is that learners need to be producers and not consumers of content they need to be uh, self motivated independent learners and adopt the new way of uh, you know the new kind of uh, aspirations and the requirements of the society as there are so um, yeah so for us really uh, you know uh, for us we do two things we 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 through through the school which is a testing lab at dhanu we release uh, a lot of our content into mybigcampus.in into other spaces and we as pedagogy people as educators and as people who are uh, you know what we call ourselves a diy setup uh, we we learn everything ourselves we set up our own servers we figure it out and we uh, we experiment we test and then we get feedback from the students and we once again experiment and we once again test and in this manner we kind of uh, build a pedagogy and a learning practice that is applicable and relevant so uh, i had promised that i would keep the session very short so that there would be some opportunity for discussion and uh, uh, one of the yeah one of the concerns has always been 
uh, that you know open is not sufficient uh, you have to use proprietary content you have to go into the proprietary uh, world but over the last 10 years we found that this is just not true for every problem that we had there was always a solution in the open uh, whether it's helping our children read fluently we use the readable allowed plugin or it's scheduling meetings um, you know with children there's a scheduler so it's just that educators uh, simply look at software as a technological solution, whereas we are looking at software as a sociological solution to a problem um, that is to a problem of education that needs to be dismantled. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to end there. I think I have uh, I have been uh, very concise, but I think I have some time. So can I uh, open the floor for questions, uh, Diego, Fiona? Uh, yes. Um any questions to Michelle? Can you uh, write it in the, yeah. uh, in the chat, the public chat? So currently, just to share while we are at it, um, currently we have opened our platform Pan India in this lockdown and uh, children from all over the country, including our children, you know, located in these villages are logging in to mybigcampus.in through their mobile phones and we use exactly this platform. We use uh, 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 the LMS on my big campus along with the virtual classroom on Big Blue Button and we are delivering classes back to back. How do you measure the success of your method? And so uh, we don't measure us. We, I mean, we don't measure the success, but we, as I said, it's a, it's a space of constant reflection and constant looking at, you know, did we use this tool correctly? Was this content that we put in the Moodle platform, uh, you know, really working for still children? Did this interactive video help? Was this H5P designed properly? Did it achieve the course objectives? Can I use database instead? You know, so uh, in the next session, we are going to use, uh, we're going to be sharing how we actually do this. Uh, Chirag's presenting actually how our platform works. Uh, all our children in the school, we have 125 children in the school that use uh, the Moodle platform. We give quizzes, they use the mobile app at home, and uh, the mobile app has been successful. Yes, we are using it for children between seven years and 14 years, and these are all Adivasi children located in uh, villages in Maharashtra. Raspberry Pi is brilliant. We are in a low resource area. We have electricity issues. And for the last four years, we've converted all our classrooms uh, with Raspberry Pis. We have about 60, 70 Raspberry Pi machines that are used. And we've uh, we've never had to do any um, you know anything with them. We host our own OS on it. It's called um, TreeBN. And uh, we are happy to um, you know share it uh, with you. A tree BN has been customized from Debian and it has a host of generic utilities as well as packages like uh, Tuxma, Gcompre, and other kind of gamified tools. Uh, so uh, it is possible in uh, rural areas, Dr. Gopinath. I'm right now sitting in a tribal village three hours away from Bombay uh, myself. And uh, you will be surprised that. Uh, tribal parents are willing to spend money and willing to buy laptops and Raspberry Pis for their children. They are willing to invest in a mobile phone so that the child has access to education. And uh, it's not like the poor in, our, poor in our country don't understand the value of good quality education. They understand that the Zilla Parishad schools are not really uh, providing anything for that matter. Yeah, uh, we will release TreeBN on our site. It was there earlier. I need to just put it up again. It's called um, it's called tamarintree.org. We will release TreeBN there. And uh, yeah, I, we are happy to share uh, our experiences regularly. Yeah. Students in Kashmir, yeah, we are happy to help Manmeet if we can. Uh, we don't need to move from here. We can help you set up a platform. You can use our platform. My Big Campus is now open. Uh, we, 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 we install TreeBN on micro SD cards, put them into Raspberry Pis, and we send them across. So we could install a TreeBN. We could send, courier you a micro SD card that you could install in your school in Kashmir or Murli Dharan could use. Um, I think I'm losing time. Diego said one minute. So I, I will give sufficient time to my colleague Chirag, who's going to share a little more about how uh, we uh, we use Moodle. You can email me at uh, michelle at tamarintree.net. Uh, we are happy to help people set up their own platforms, help with open education resources, help with installation, help with any kind of guidance. Our content is also available. So uh, yeah, you can please reach out to us. We have a full-fledged grading and assessment system on, uh, on Moodle. Yeah. Diego, shall I end? Yeah. Yes, please. So we could, yeah. So 
we continue this is going to continue by in the next session so if you join there chirag will explain a little bit more yes thank you very yeah, much yeah thank, thank you, you so much share. for such a nice audience and a big audience actually yeah good fantastic uh please um leave this uh, room and join us in the same in the next presentation that will be in the um, in the other room please thank you <laughs>